Hey, this is Russ Dizdar, ShatterTheDarkness.net. If you are taking this from Dynamic Discipleship, it has been designed to help new believers in part of the understanding of spiritual warfare, uh, part of our understanding of dealing with demonic oppression and attack in our lives, but it's also been developed to speak to many individuals out there who are hearing voices, feeling weird presence in their life, even from the notes from the newsletter that we have, let me just read this. The title of it is, uh, How to Break Free from Dark Spirits. It goes on to say this, The problem today of voices in the head, quote, and involuntary influences, quote, is happening to too many. The article a friend sent me on Germans who are crying out for help to free them from those unwanted voices is more evidence of the plague of harassing dark spirits. Since the 60s, since the 60s, so many have opened ancient doors where the whispers of seducing spirits scratch and knock. Now listen, we're going to go over again how to break free. And over the years, uh, many, many years now, we've done deliverance and exorcism. Uh, we've always called it, we like to call it freedom encounter. It's all about what Jesus came to do. Now listen, if you are listening, two factors. God is real, He is spirit, and the demonic side, they are very, very real. And so we want to deal with the fact that uh, the ramping up of demonic presence in the last days, as the Bible predicts, is unparalleled in all of history. There will be an unprecedented number of people being influenced, guided, directed by seducing spirits, voices, a presence. Ancient rituals will be, uh, you know, be brought out, and uh, spirits will be conjured. Spirits will come through gateways, doorways, whatever you want to call it, and they're going to be all around us. I can tell you story after story of dealing with individuals who had voices in their head. I told of a young girl who came into church one day, and she stood there at the very end of the service and wouldn't come forward, and people took me to her, and I began to speak to her, and she would just nod her head, and I can tell from many experiences that I've had before with folks that something was telling her not to speak, not to talk, and I finally said, do they not want you to talk to me? And she shook her head, yes. And I said, did they not want you to come forward and be prayed for? And she shook her head, yes. And uh, I knew right away that the demonic presence was there. I felt that agitation. So I began to pray again in the authority of Christ. And instantly the demonic manifested. She went. She literally fell bef between the pews and uh, the benches. Um, and But she was set free. And another time uh, the young lady came in and the same thing. I was told... Uh, Basically, she could, you could see that she was bound up again, voices in her head. Literally this time, as I commanded for the demons to come forward, without harming the girl, literally she fell to the floor. I commanded the demonic presence to say its name, and it did. And many times, if we've done deliverance sessions, I would command, tell me your name. How did you get in there? And again and again and again, people. I mean, I'm talking about police officers, teachers, People in churches uh, from all over the place have come to talk about voices in the head, dark influence, involuntary influence and feelings and thoughts and bondages. And listen, let me say to this, to Satanists and uh, to Luciferians and New Agers and others, if you let them in, you're going to have to live with them. There's only one way out, only one way to gain freedom. They've come to deceive, to uh, seduce, to sabotage. I mean, if you want to read the story of Voices in the Head, if you want to see the uh, end game of the demonic presence, read the Gospel of Mark. And as a matter of fact, it's the Gospel that we're encouraging everyone reading uh, the materials from the discipleship page or listening to this uh, broadcast, that you would, you would read the Gospel of Mark and literally note how many times Jesus encountered demonized individuals. Now listen, regardless of where you're at, New Age or whatever else, hear me out. Because in the day that you and I are living in, it's without question 
that uh, massive, massive spiritual communication has been going on for a long time and ramping up. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say something because I mentioned it in the article in the newsletter that since the 60s, so many have opened ancient doors where the whispers of seducing spirits scratch and knock. Now, I was reading an occult historian. He wrote a book, I believe the title of it is The Occult Establishment. He mentioned there that there are two times in recent history that um, are the two times of the greatest proliferation of occultic literature that normally leads to all kinds of new spiritual experiences, spiritual societies, spiritual groups, mediums, psychics, all that. Two times. The first time in pre-Nazi Germany, where massive literature began to be unleashed in that culture, which opened the doors to secret societies and spiritual groups and spiritual seekers and experiences, literally mediums and psychics and readers of the dead, voices in people's heads and so forth. Now, this continued to spawn all over Europe and into England, but he mentions, again, the occult historian mentions that the second greatest proliferation of occultic literature occurred in the 60s in the United States of America. So I want you to hear that if you remember the 60s at all, not only in the music did we find a lot of occult teaching and even satanic teaching and uh, satanic uh, you know, mention to Satan and demons and so forth, you can read it in a lot of the uh, experiences that those who had the drug experiences opened the doors to the demons. And, of course, all kinds of occult um, literature that came in opened the doors to channeling, seeking spirits, uh, inviting spirits into their lives, new mediums that would uh, be readers of the dead and uh, psychics and so forth. So the 60s was literally an influx of literature and as individuals read the literature and began to seek the spirits, and it comes from both sides. As lost mankind, our human spirits are dead to God, but still alive spiritually. We have spiritual capacity. What we don't realize is that unaided, the dark spirits, who are the most proficient in seduction and deception, can come as Satan himself does, as an angel of light. And so as an angel of light, the two specific things will always occur. Number one, lead people away from the real, from the real Christ and the real message of Jesus Christ. Number two, lead them further and further into darker spirituality and into uh, deeper and darker bondage. So as those experiences begin to occur, along with the drugs, the reading, the rise of the Church of Satan, uh, the incredible rise of the New Age movement, and all kinds of uh, new spiritual streams from the East and other experiences, well, millions of individuals in the United States, and this has already been going on in Europe and, and England, began to uh, you know, get in touch. Uh, with spirits and spirituality, and begin they began to get attachments and literally possession. They began to get spiritual experiences. They began to leave their bodies, hear voices, contact the dead, and uh, so many have been highly deceived. The difficulty now is in the 80s and 90s, and now in this third millennium, is millions of individuals, Europe, the UK, and the United States have been crying out in psych wards, among therapists, showing up at churches, finding themselves in jail, because dark influence, dark voices, began to speak uh, to hearts and lives, guide human beings, deceive human beings, to the point of even suicide, and many other things. So we need to realize what's going on. Regardless of where you're at right now, know that the Word of God demonstrates the demonization. The Greek word diamonizoi. People can be demonized, even in levels, from the level of just being harassed, oppressed, attachment, attack, uh, to the point of total possession, like we see in Mark's Gospel chapter.
chapter 8. In Mark, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 shows us uh, the incredible shredding of humanity. You must listen. If you're going to deal with voices in the head, spirits, dark spirits, if you're going to come to realize, uh, maybe even in your own life, whatever kind of influence they brought, um, the issue is this. When Jesus arrived, he immediately, by his sheer presence, exposed them, and they began to kick them out and, and demonstrate sheer authority and, and demonstrate the clash of those kingdoms. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now, before we go into all the, the studies on this, that we're dealing with days now, even in 1 John chapter 1. If you've read there, you've read that this is how we know it's the last hour, that many antichrists have gone out, many who would be led by false spirits, claiming to be a Christ or the Christ, many uh, cult groups, Sun, Young, Moon, and many, many others like that will claim that. And also the Antichrist, which is the, in, the counterfeit incarnation, the most, uh, probably the, the, the most powerful satanic manifestation in human history, uh, will, is right at the, we're, we're right at the door. And the Bible predicted in, in Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, the Spirit of God, now listen, especially if a New Ager, a Luciferian, and others get a hold of this, if you understand spirits and spirits influencing and contacting spirits or spirits in your life, then please understand something else. There is also the Spirit of the Sovereign God, uh, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. He is the infinite, eternal Spirit. He is God, the Holy Spirit. He dwells in me as a believer in Christ. He's promised to everyone who believe on Jesus. All who receive Christ will be given the gift of God the Holy Spirit. We originally were created, if you read Genesis chapter 1 and 2, you're going to find out that we were created. God breathed into us the breath of life. Literally the Spirit uh, was breathed into us the breath of life but in the fall of the human race, we became dead uh, to God, dead to the Spirit of God. Not that He has not been striving with humanity, read Genesis 6. Not that He's not been operating and working the Word of God from beginning to end. The most incredible book in human history. And uh, I would challenge those who don't read to read because this is a book that God used, the, the Holy Spirit used, 40 different writers with three different language backgrounds from three separate continents over a period of 1,600 years, basically, to bring about what we have now as the living words of God. Literally, the Spirit of God animates the Word. When you read the Word of God, the Spirit of God is speaking out. The Bible would consider, in the book of Hebrews, read it, when the writer quotes, and the Holy Spirit says... Every verse can be, you can say the same thing, and the Holy Spirit says. So I want to introduce you to God the Holy Spirit, person, God, uh, co-equal with the Father and Son, there in the beginning of creation, there in Old Testament Israel, there causing the conception of uh, the Virgin Mary, of God in human flesh, of Christ. And uh, even Jesus uh, representing humanity, the Bible teaches us that the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord came upon Him. And uh, you can read in Luke chapter 5, and you can see where the power of the Lord, the Spirit of God, was present to heal the sick. So, I want to introduce you. Listen, if you're a believer in Christ, the Spirit of God lives in you. If you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, you know the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. If you're a New Ager or someone else out there, I'm telling you right now, the Spirit of God has probably led you to listen to this today. The Spirit of God is in the world today since the day of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, His ascension and exaltation back into heaven. Since that time, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, has been He has been poured out into the, the whole world with, with the ministry, with the job of, um, of finding us and drawing us, and leading us to the message of Christ. So I'm going to tell you right now, the Spirit of God, if, you're if you want spirituality, if you want the Spirit, if you want the Spirit, um, then open up to God. 
open up to God and listen to the Spirit of God, you can do that by opening the Word of God and just saying, Spirit of the Sovereign God, speak to me. And, and begin to read and watch the supernatural interaction. Let alone the fact that He probably guided you. And that He is doing all that He is supposed to do and will do to lead you to Jesus Christ. That's part of the convicting, convincing, drawing, calling, pulling on you. And so don't, don't insult the Spirit of God. Don't throw down the work of the Holy Spirit. He is really your friend, regardless of who you are. If you're somebody who knows that you've had deliverance already, you've had spirits in you, you've had finite dark spirits, let me tell you the difference. We were made for the Spirit of God. We were not made for demons. The Spirit of God is for us. And uh, He is to dwell in us and His presence is to be with us. Uh, not demons. It's an intrusion when dark, finite spirits attach to, speak into, and even possess uh, human, human bodies and human souls. And uh, they're, they're like a, you know what I, li I liken them to? A splinter, a large wooden splinter in the skin. Stuck in there, and uh, they will become painful. Now listen, I know that there are many different occultists and others, especially uh, Satanists and Luciferians, that conjure demons, conjure spirits. And you literally befriend them in a way, though you're following the precise rituals that they have given. You're literally following them. They're not following you. You don't have them. If you've invited them in and they've come in, they have you. And I've yet to see uh, Satanists and others get rid of those power demons. Well, I'm going to go over some of the things because so many have written me, so many have asked. What I'm doing here is giving you a basic outline of how to break free from dark spirits. And I would urge you, if you're a Christian, or especially if you don't know Jesus, I'm going to tell you that He came... Matter of fact, I'm going to give you, uh, listen, this is what this is a one verse of the Word of God. I want you to hear this. It's very important. In the book of 1 John, you can pick up a Bible, go on the net, and read it yourself. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, it says this. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. If you read that Gospel of Mark, you will see where the demons were just literally exposed to what they really are, and, uh, and they were literally ousted, kicked out of lives. In the book of James, in the Bible, you'll read where it says, At the name of Je Jesus Christ, at the name of Jesus, demons shudder. They tremble in fear. Both in the Word of God and my experience with demons and dealing with deliverance with people, demons clearly know who Jesus is. He is the Savior, the Son of God, Lord. He is God in human flesh. They know this. You can read about it in the book of Acts, where a demon spoke through a human being and said, Jesus I know. And the Apostle Paul, he also says, Paul I know, because he's a believer. But who are you? Referring to unsaved, those who did not have the Spirit of God, the authority of Christ. And uh, literally the demon used that human body to attack those... Um, those who were trying to use Jesus in a wrong way. So really there's a warning for even New Agers and others who try to use the name of Jesus in a magical way. Um, if you don't know Him, you cannot use His name. Now, here's what the Bible says about His name. It's really neat. That there is no other name given to men, under, you know, given, uh, to men by which we must be saved but the name Jesus Christ. In the book of Acts, the declaration of the early disciples, no other name given out of heaven among men, but the name Jesus. That's why the Bible says, Who's, now listen, this is a word of faith. This is, this is a word of God, and you may need this if you don't know Him yet. This is, a, this is an incredible invitation that whosoever calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. If you don't know Him, you can call the name of Jesus Christ who died, was buried, rose from the dead, lives right now, who is God in human flesh, who loves you, who wants you. Listen. He lives and He's been knocking at the door of your heart. 
I'm going to tell you right now, there's no question, especially now. Because the Bible predicted 2,000 years ago that, 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 uh, that demon spirits, dark spirits, would come in massive waves, seducing, deceiving, counterfeits, supernatural events, all kinds of things to convince fallen humanity of an alternative spirituality that refers to a to a evolution of human you know human consciousness a transformation of human human being uh, some kind of you know promise that, that Lucifer gave in the beginning and never fulfilled and cannot fulfill now think about the other side of the story God promises a transformation unequaled anywhere now listen this is important because it involves this it involves a salvation salvation means ultimately that you come to know God personally really know God he comes into your life you're brought into relationship but listen forgiveness of sin freedom from sin freedom from satanic lies your eyes spiritually lit up by the presence and power of God. The power of God comes into your life. The gift of eternal life and the indwelling presence of God assuring you, not only of eternal life, but of His love for you, your identity, um, and all of the Word of God spiritually would be opened up to you. All the promises would be for you. Listen. Is there any reason why, if you don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord, is there any reason why you wouldn't give Him your life? You wouldn't open up your heart. Because He wants you. He loves you. And He calls you to come home. And you can pray out, Lord Jesus, I recognize you're the Savior. I, I believe in you. I accept that you died for me and rose from the dead. And uh, I believe in you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. I accept all the gift of eternal life, the gift of the Holy Spirit, total forgiveness and personal new life in you. You can do that right now if you haven't. And those who have, hey, praise God, you know Him and you can share Him with others. If you know how you've been saved and you know Christ, you can tell others how you've come to know Him. Listen, you know what I've done over the years? I've led a lot of people to Jesus who at first had other spirits in them or on them. People that were brought to us. Can I tell you about a time when a, a lady came into church? She was brought from another church, brought clear over to our church. And as a pastor, I just got done praying, and I looked, and I heard this noise, and uh, there this woman was brought in. She's standing in the middle of the aisle, and a demon spirit was speaking out of her mouth, challenging the church, telling us, we can't have her, you're not going to get her that they've worked too hard to keep her. Voices came right out of her mouth that were not her own, right in front of the whole church. And I walked down the aisle, the church began to pray, the worship team began to play worship music, and we began to rebuke the demon spirits, and eventually, and she had a lot, she had tremendous abuse and demons that were literally put into her by a, by a satanic type priest. And um, to this day, I, I, I saw her not too long ago, years now later, She's married, she loves Jesus, uh, she's growing, she's in a church, and, the, and those demon spirits that were inside of her are now gone. And she knew what they were. And, and she was going through deliverance to get the demons out. She was crying out, telling us of some of their presence and how they got in. And she closed those doors. Let me tell you of another time. We prayed in the church after a sermon. I just simply prayed out, Lord... If there is any demonic presence uh, affecting anybody in this building, we command that they would be exposed without harming anybody, that they would be exposed and manifest so that we can deal with them in the authority of Christ and kick them out. And guess what happened? A lady came forward. You could tell she was very nervous. Others were coming forward for prayer. And she came forward next to another pastor. And all of a sudden, everybody in the church can hear this, this deep, almost like male but demonic voice come out of her and say this, no, you can't, you know, and, and trying to say, no, you can't, you know, get me out or you can't have her. And uh, the, the pastor wisely rebuked the demon and told her to shut up. And then he cast the demon out of the woman. Uh, and, and, and this has happened again and again and again at churches. 
And I'm convinced in many churches, because most of the churches I know don't even do what Jesus said to do. And it's a sad thing that pastors and leaders, most of which I know, cannot recognize demonization, nor do they realize the authority they've been given, and uh, they don't know what to do. That's why in our little offices for years, over 50 churches have sent us demonized people, anywhere from the level of satanic ritual abuse and power demons, to young Satanists, to Wiccan girls, people in the New Age, people who had animal spirits, all kinds of demon spirits, through weird sexual, perverted sexual acts, and demons and sex, and all these other experiences. A professor, a professor that had a demonic presence, well, through some Satanists that really abused and used him and put spirits in, but also transferred spirits, and that he then opened up to them. And uh, it, it was a very, very powerful encounter. I remember the day that he came forward in a church and the demons spoke right out of him, right there to me, and said, my last name. They said, Dizdar, we're going to kill you. And I recognized there were three spirits, and we, we rebuked him, and he fell to the ground. We rebuked the demons, and, they, and he fell to the ground. And, and bottom line, the demons came out, and he was delivered. He's preaching and teaching at a local church now. And I, again, story after story, a young Satanist out of Cleveland we were asked to come up to. When we finally got him to come to the point where he wanted to accept Christ, he began to pray, and the demon seized him. He began to choke, and he fell to the ground. Again, that's their nature. If you know anybody that's a New Ager, Wiccan, Satanist, whatever, if you conjure spirits, if you let spirits come in, if you let demons come into you, or if you invite spirits to come around you, guess what happens? Guess what happens? They will come because they are seeking. They are looking. They are seeking to, to get into lives, guide lives. You Listen, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit of God is revealed in the Word of God, their agenda. And we are in the days of unprecedented manifestation of demonic de spirits demonized individuals, and obviously if you're listening, either you have an interest in helping others, or God has led you to this, that you might know how to be saved from the demonic side altogether. Jesus came to rescue you and save you. Uh, you may have, maybe you're, you're listening because you, you've seen the title, How to Break, and you have voices in your head, you have an uh, involuntary presence, you know, you got presence in your life, you want to get rid of it. And I read an article uh, on one of the other broadcasts. A friend of mine sent to me, he sent a little note, it was kind of funny, he said, Russ, they need you, the Germans need you. And the article was all about how Germans, it's a national article, and how they were crying out for uh, freedom from the dark spirits because so many people have gone to therapists and others. Therapy doesn't work, my friends. Drug therapy, electroshock therapy uh, does not work. And I've even noticed now where books are coming out. I've been reading a book lately called uh, uh, Hidden Religion or Forbidden Religion. And in it, there's, a, there's an article about uh, basically a Hindu New Age-ish type teacher, uh, psychologist, that is uh, getting rid of negative energy. There's even a machine out there that they're using saying that they can identify and get rid of negative energy. Um, and if you are guided by false spirits in the first place, because the article was, the, the chapter anyway that I was reading said that uh, unlike uh, Christian deliverance where there's a, you know, could be a loud, you know, uh, battle, the demons scream and there's a loud battle and it becomes a ferocious thing sometimes until the demon is cast out, that this woman, Hindu New Age, you know, kind of psychiatrist, psychologist, uh, through her means can talk the spirits out, basically befriend them and talk them out in a very quiet and gentle sense. Now again, there is utter, de absolute sheer deception there. Totally sheer deception. Because demon spirits can, can, like Satan himself, masquerade as an angel of light. A friendly spirit. And as long as you don't bother them or threaten them, they're not going to show themselves. They're not going to, you know, show their fangs and their fur per se. Because you have a New Age teacher and, and people like that, 
They have no authority. The demon can say, hey, I know Jesus, and I know those who have Christ in them and the authority of Christ. I don't see that in this person. There's danger there because the demon can manifest and attack a person who doesn't have the authority, but also deceive. And so a person can be told that, oh, the spiritual presence uh, is gone now and, and they're, they're, you know, uh, are, is it really? Why do demons, when it comes to Christ and His authority, uh, show such a uh, radical battle? You know why? Because the demons have expressed in the Scripture and to me personally, as we've done many, many deliverances, they fear Christ, they know He's the Lord of heaven and earth, they know they've done wrong, uh, they don't care. They don't want to change. They're not, they're not, I've never met a demon yet that wants to repent or change. They can't be because they're totally, completely committed to their side. And they've already made their choice. Now listen, um, I've never found a demon that, uh, that um, you know, doesn't know. I mean, you know, when we've dealt with them, they know the judgment to come. And it's only Jesus who can force and cause their... Uh, a, 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 a exposure of their real of their real nature of what they really are. We were doing a deliverance one time, and this person talked about an energy uh, that they first felt an energy and realized that this energy was a translucent spirit. Well, when we commanded the quote energy to to acknowledge what it was, um, it was a, it was a spirit that said its name was Argon. And it was trying to be this nice, translucent, New Age type spirit. And um, finally, when we commanded, I commanded the spirit, Argon, to tell this person what the true intent was. And the, here's the true story. The demon yelled out inside this person to take them, and they cussed. to take. And all, demons cuss a lot. They like cussing. And uh, they try to blaspheme Jesus and mock God too. But anyway, they... Um, uh, it, it screamed out to take them to blankety-blank hell. Realize something, if you're a New Ager, a Wiccan, Druid, Satanist, Luther, whatever, if you don't have the living Christ in and the infinite Spirit of God inside of you, then you uh, are uh, vulnerable. And depending on what doors you've opened up, now, some of you can open up doors, which we'll talk about here, Ouija boards and getting psychic readings and... Uh, you know, any kind of occult books and practices, calling on spirits, doing things. If you've gotten into rituals and bonding rituals, and li you can even say they're little rituals. You've opened the door for spirits. They, they now believe they have the right. And that's part of the teaching we're going to go over here, okay? And in the newsletter, we have this teaching marked down. And uh, you can, you can uh, take a look at it there if you want to. Or maybe you've gotten this uh, from the Dynamic Discipleship series. Either way, I'm going to go over it. Uh, listen, if you feel you need help or freedom from unwanted dark voices or, or presence in your life, now, first of all, think of other options. You know, any kind of drug stuff you're on. And also, have you ever been diagnosed bipolar or multiple personality disorder? There is a difference between alter personalities, which are human, a human fragmentation of the soul, uh, even those that came from satanic ritual abuse know the difference between a, a, uh, a part of them uh, or, and or a, a demon. And they see the demon as an intrusion. Again, like that splinter. They're like a splinter in the soul. And uh, they want uh, to do, they want control ultimately. They want to use a person. They want to manifest through a person. And if the person begins to fight that or doesn't want it anymore, they begin to harm the person. So you can eliminate other options. The bottom line is, number two, inquire, search, and discernment. You might have to just take a look in. You know, listen, if you're hearing voices in your head, if you're feeling influence, overwhelming strong influences, especially if a presence within or a voice within wants to lead you into harming somebody else, uh, even in the idea of killing, raping, hurting, stealing, uh, doing sexually perverted things, um, you know, or even commit suicide. 
demons will even even try to lead a person to suicide. They really will. So you may have to sit back and really, you know, you know, think through, inquire, search, discern. Now I would say that in all of this, because this is not a deliverance session, uh, I would I would uh, encourage you to find experienced people that you know believers in Jesus, the real Christ, um, who have been given His authority. That can that in their experience they've done this numerous times, you know that they can minister to you. For example, do you want a mechanic? A mechanic that knows how to fix a car and work on a car might be excellent. But if he's never worked on a human heart, do you want him to cut open your chest and work on your heart? Of course not. And that's why I'm saying that you need a believer who knows the authority of Christ, and it's better to have someone who has experience. Although I'll say this. There's a first time for everyone. Even in the idea of auto-deliverance, auto-deliverance, where believers in Christ, you can feel like there's a voice, you can feel oppressed, you can feel the pressure, and you don't know what to do. It's not good enough just to bury yourself. Let me give you an ex example of that in my own life. When I was, uh, I was raised up outside of the church, I didn't know God, church, Bible, nothing. I believed there was a God, I guess, but I was raised in the 60s, late 60s, early 70s. I was partying, doing all kinds of stuff. Became a somewhat Buddhist Taoist in teaching. Got involved in Golden Buddha, learning how to leave my body. Uh, got into all kinds of occult writings and Ouija boards, all that stuff. But when I got saved, the moment I got saved, I felt like all this darkness broke off of me and, and the light came in. The Spirit of God, Christ, came into my life. It was like an spiritual explosion. And I knew that I knew that I knew that I that I that God was in me, that Christ was in me, and it was amazing. Of all the search, of all what I looked for, I never, until somebody shared, you know, the night before I got saved. Well, actually, the very night, but it was early in the morning, the night that I was at a party and someone shared Jesus, and I just saw a presence and power on them that I've never seen anywhere else, and uh, that was the presence and power of God. That was the presence of the living Christ. And uh, later that night, in the middle of the morning, I rolled out of bed and I just said, Jesus, I don't know everything about you, but I accept you as Lord and Savior. Fill me with your power. You know, forgive me. What? And I, all I know is uh, just, uh, it just Christ came in and the presence and power of God came in. And I, I felt darkness dissipate. But let me tell you something. In my home, where I lived at home, back at home, I still had a room down in the basement. That I had these like demon pictures on the wall. We had strobe lights back in those days, parties in that room, and we did a lot of things. I did a lot of things there. Meditation, Golden Buddha meditation to leave my body, all these things. Well, anyway, I came home probably within the first two weeks of being a believer in Jesus. I came home, and I didn't hear any voices in my head, didn't feel any more influence. I just felt filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. I just was really you know, having a great time. But I remember coming home by myself after the Bible study on Wednesday night, coming home, going downstairs to my home, and uh, going into that room, and I began to walk over to the couch, and I laid on the couch, and I'm telling you the truth, I felt like literally somebody walked in behind me. Almost like hooves were behind me, you know, uh, grinding into the floor, walking step by step. Toward. I felt such an unholy presence, such a... I mean, I've got, I admit, immediately fear flew through me. I mean, just like liquid just flew through me. I had the chills, fear, and I began to, my forehead got, you know, I started to sweat on my forehead because I was like, I, I was overwhelmed by a sense of this ominous, awful, I knew it was a dark presence. I knew, and all, for some reason in my mind, but probably because of the Spirit of God, two things I, I realized by the Holy Spirit inside of me. One, that this was some presence that once made claims over my life. That it was literally claiming that it had rights because I opened the doorways. Two, now that I'd been saved, Jesus Christ in His death, resurrection, His work, trampled all those satanic rights, set me free, and um, now God had the rights as I literally, willfully, willingly opened the door to Him. 
I felt this conflict. Now, see, I didn't know any verses yet, really. I didn't know that I had authority in Jesus to literally speak and command it to get out of my room and to renounce uh, ever opening the doors to any of those many, many doors that I opened up before I got saved. I just remember that night laying on my couch, put my head, you know, buried in the couch and just saying, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. I began to cry out to Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. Deliver me. Uh, Lord, protect me. And I just began to pray that out. And you know what? The next thing I remember, waking up in the morning, having peace like a river, the peace and the presence and the power of God. I remember sitting up on that couch and smiling and saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. Because I recognized how dark and ominous and evil and angry that presence was, but that Jesus had set me free and in that little battle delivered me. And then it was later that I learned that he's given me authority and the armor of God and all of what those um, you know, weapons of our warfare, as the scripture speaks about, what all of that's about. Now I know that. And um, I, I don't know where you, you know, what you know right now, friend. I really don't. And I'm praying that uh, God has uh, been ministering to your life. But if you have voices and influence, you know, you might want to ask some questions like, when did it start? Track back when it started. And you may find that you opened a door somewhere. You know, you might have, you might have opened a door some way. Mark that down. Uh, let me ask another question. What do these voices, what do they say or what do they want? I mean, really, what are they saying? What do they want? And that may, that may bring fear to you. Uh, another question, how did they get in or on you? Because no demon, there's a movie put out with um, Denzel Washington called Fallen. It was all about a zale-zale, a demon spirit that jumped from one person to another person to another. It's almost like a fly landing on one person and landing on another. Demons can't just simply do that. There has to be um, some way of influence. Let me just say this again, just to challenge, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, the Bible would say you're lost, you're separated from God. Regardless of your spirituality, you're separated from the living, infinite, personal God. And I want you to you know, go again on the web, or if you've got a Bible, to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. You know what it says? In reference to Satan, it calls him the ruler of the power of the air, who is now... At work, the Greek word work is meaning a supernatural operative power. He's at work in those who are lost. You can read that for yourself. Can I ask you? Can I ask you right now, if you were to die right now, where are you going to end up? Who has rights to your life? You know, the Bible simply says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We've all done this, man. We all know that. We've all done that. Take a look at Jesus. Look what he has done. Never sinned. Came to save us, deliver us, heal us, give us the gift of eternal life. But I want to tell you right now, what has been going on since the 60s up until this very day is unprecedented in demonic manifestation and presence and power. But we haven't seen anything yet. The Antichrist is around the corner. The great anarchy, chaos, rebellion is about ready to break loose in the world. We all feel that ominous feeling out there. And when that occurs, you better understand that it's like the veil from that side to this breaks open and massive demonic presence uh, with massive deception, massive seduction will flow into the world and uh, will seek to lead humanity to take the mark of the beast are you prepared? Are you protected? You take the mark of the beast, which involves demonic acquisition, and you're lost forever. You cannot be saved if you do that. If you've taken uh, other oaths and whatever else, or even if you mock Jesus or whatever, I'm going to tell you right now, those sins can be forgiven right now. Jesus will forgive you because he wants to. He loves you, and he can forgive you right now and come into your life, and I... I I want to say something very clear to you. I beg you in the sight of God, give your life to Jesus. Why not give your life to the one that loves you, knows you, and wants you? Outside of him, what do you really have? Now, if you're somebody else plagued with dark presence, 
Dot, that dark presence can lead you into addictions, all kinds. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, a lot, of, a lot of the 60s people don't realize how a lot of those drugs, a lot of new agents today are, are really pushing the concept of drugs to lead to higher consciousness, and they're wanting to go back to do what the Mayans and others have done, and, 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 and the use of certain kinds of drugs that open a person up. Pharmakios is a Greek word of the New Testament in the book of Revelation. Uh, referring, again, it's connected to demonic presence and can open you up to seducing spirits and to voices and to presence, a dark presence. So listen, let me ask you a question right now. Providentially, that means by the arranging of God in a supernatural way, why do you think you're listening to this right now? Why do you think you're listening to this message? Let me say point three in, these, uh, in, this, in this little teaching, okay? Understand the laws of engagement. Let me just give them to you real quick. Dark spirits are real and present in the world. You can read it in 1 John chapter 4, uh, Mark's Gospel chapter 1. Any of the Gospels, you can read it throughout all of Scripture. The demon, Satan himself is real, and he's real on the earth. The demons by the billions are real, and they're in every culture, they're everywhere. They're dark, they're seducing, they never want to tell you who they really are. Uh, they just simply are whispering out, calling out, seeking whom they can draw in um, to their trap. Secondly, dark spirits are deceptive and they seek control. Read Mark 5, 1 John chapter 2. They will come with counterfeit spirituality. Demon spirits, finite dark spirits will never lead you to Jesus Christ, the real Christ of Scripture. They will all, always either give you a fake little you know, New Age Jesus uh, or do all they can to lead you away from the Gospel, the Word of God, and don't want you to have anything to do with it. Uh, they're very deceptive. And there was a prophecy 2,000 years ago. Again, here's another point. Uh, dark spirits have an agenda. 2,000 years ago, the infinite Spirit of God spoke and, and, and predicted that the demon spirits called seducing spirits would come to lead people away from Christianity to the faith and to follow, listen, to follow doctrines of demons, teachings, new alternative spiritual teachings. Let me, you know, again, what are you into? What are you believing in? And have you arrived? Do you have the gift of eternal life? Do you have the total forgiveness? Do you know in an absolute personal way God? Because He loves you, knows you, and wants you. And you can come to Him through Jesus right now. Well, dark spirits seek to enter into lives, 1 Peter 5, Ephesians 4. Dark spirits come through legal doorways. Now, the Greek word of the original New Testament manuscript is topon. Meaning, literally, you know, if you've opened up the Ouija board, you know, enough times, demons that begin to come through, listen, if you call on them, they will come. If you get a hold of demonic demon names, actual names from Book of Shadows and other, you know, satanic Bible type things, and start calling on them, please understand something. They will come. They will come. Uh, they'll begin their whispers. They'll begin, listen, I've heard in all kinds of ways. They'll begin to try to influence you, guide you, lead you, and get into your life to the point that they can even touch you and, and you can feel their presence. I've had people that had me come to their home where demon, demons, where there was satanic worship and things occurred in those homes where demons were raised and the demons stayed there in those places even when people moved out and new people moved in. And they began, you know, they began to feel something grabbing them, touching them, even a whisper. Even a voice. Because those presence, the, the real presence was there. And they're looking for legal doorways to come through. And they can come through a psychic giving you a reading by a demon spirit to, to you know, mislead you and guide you. Uh, readers of the dead you know, can uh, say they're talking to your aunt or whatever else. And it's, it's really, again, just counterfeit uh, spirits that are acting, again, to draw you. Notice how the whole thing with reading readers of the dead that that are telling you they're talking to your your grand you know your your grandma or your ancestors guess what none of them are trying to lead you to the real Christ you know why 
Demon spirits will never lead you towards Christ. They will always lead you away from to alternative spirituality. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, will always lead you to Jesus, to His love, to His person, know Him, and uh, for you to you know, come into relationship as you receive Him as Savior and Lord. Now, do you have any legal doorways in your life? Have you opened up? Think about it now. And you might just want to cry out, Psalm 139, there's a verse that says, Search me, O God, and see if there's any, what? Uh, you know, anything offensive. And, and, and you could say it this way, Lord, is there anything, any, anything that I've opened up to, anything that I have, you know, given my life to, to where demons, you know, maybe in my family line, maybe in my grandfather, a family, a familiar spirit. So here's where we seek, we inquire. For those of you who know how to pray, deliverance prayers. And this is, again, a very basic teaching right here. Um, you know how to you know, pray for the Spirit of God to say, hey, because demons can affect you on, from the outside, uh, from the family bloodline, wanting to draw you in. They have a legal access through any grandfather, or uncle, you know, great-grandfather that opened the door to, to the, any demons. When those grandfathers and grandmothers and witches that have died the demons say, hey, I have a right to the bloodline. So they're going to try to come down the bloodline. So um, you're going to hear me talk about renouncing anything demonic in the bloodline. It's not, nothing wrong with doing that. There's no prohibition in Scripture. It's a good thing to do to renounce Satan and all demons and all doorways and so forth. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. So how do they come in? Legal doorways. What have you opened up? Dark spirits, dark spirits come in and on people. Uh, now think about this, okay? From past or present doorways. Maybe something in the past you opened up. It might be a demonized object that somebody gave you or that you got from another country and you brought into your house and the demon that's on that object is beginning to influence the people in your house. It might be a demonized person you brought into your house. You didn't do anything wrong, but you literally brought them in your house. If you bring a demonized person in your house and do nothing about it, uh, the demonic presence begins to want to affect uh, others in that household. So remember this principle, okay? This is very important now as we get ready to the next part. Freedom from dark spirits, um, you know, you, if you're seeking that, don't seek it from New Age or occult answers. Because they don't have the authority of Christ, the Spirit of God to discern the depth or the, the power of the Spirit of God to cause... Um, exposure and uh, revelation uh, of the demons and what they really are, the presence, the voices, and so forth. What they really are, they don't have that. And uh, they may not be able to um, you know, even deal with them. Only the presence of the living Christ will expose them for what they are. That's why there's going to be a clash. And you can read about that in Mark chapter 5. The demons know. They, fe they fear Jesus. Let me just say a few things about that, okay? This is very important, too. Here's what you do. I'm going to tell you when my life was very, you know, I was only a believer maybe one or two weeks, and I felt that ungodly demon's presence walk into my room, literally almost like I could hear it. And it's like I knew what it wanted. That it was like, because it was claiming that I had opened, the, you know, had, it had rice. Well, now that I'm saved, it can see the difference. Maybe it was always there, but being spiritually blinded, I never knew it until Christ came in the Spirit of God opened my eyes to the difference. Now the infinite Spirit of God, the powerful Holy Spirit dwells within me and uh, gives me discernment. And there was a clash. Well, let me say first of all this. Cry out to Jesus. Just cry out to Jesus. He is God in human flesh. He is everything the Old Testament prophets said He would be, what the New Testament Gospels say He is, what all of the, the Word of God says. Just cry out to Jesus, the real Jesus who died on the cross, was buried, rose from the dead, and um, the one that the demons you know, trembled, and, and the one, you know, Jesus defeated Satan. So cry out to Jesus. And I want to encourage you to read the Gospel of Mark. You know, get into the Bible and read for yourself. This, you know, especially if you don't know Jesus yet. I, I beg you to do that. I, I urge you to do that for your personal life because of the love of God and because of the danger that you are in without Christ and in the mix of demons. They don't have any problem wanting to see anybody go to hell. 
Their goal is to steal the Word of God from you so that you can't believe. Jesus taught that. Read the parables about how Satan comes to steal the Word of God. Or how he uh, is at nighttime during the darkness trying to uh, you know, create people who will worship him. There are Satan worshipers everywhere. And I'm sure by the presence of God, because we prayed in advance, because we knew the Spirit of God would use this, that there would be Satanists and Luciferians and others who would listen to this broadcast. And your first, the first thing I want to tell you is that Jesus loves you, knows everything about you, wants you to come to know Him and receive the, you know, come home, my friend. Come home. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe on you. I accept you. I, I turn away from every lying spirit and everything false. And I come, forgive me, wash me, cleanse me. He'll do it in an instant. The gift of eternal life will be given. Well, seek Jesus who exposed and destroyed demonic presence, Mark 5. Know the work of the cross. I mean, the demons know it. Listen, you can even read Colossians chapter 2, and you'll read where, by the work of the cross, Jesus exposed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. And again, demons don't even like to hear the word of God. If you're an individual that has a demon or demon influence, they don't like you listening to anything and any quotes of Scripture. And obviously, they don't want you to get there. You may need outside help. You may need some believers, real believers, who, hold, who have the authority of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit uh, to discern and help them get you free. Jesus is ultimately the deliverer. Jesus is alive, absolutely alive. Demons then and now, today, fear, and they will obey His authority. Even in, uh, listen, every, every real believer in Jesus, if you're a real believer in Jesus, according to Luke, Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, He has given you the authority to uh, order the demons to trample their work to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. So you got to speak it out. you got to command the demons, whether they're felt or totally manifested, you got to command them to be bound and broken off and commanded them to leave and get out. Read Luke chapter 10 about how Jesus taught early disciples, and that's what we're taught, the exact same thing, and you have been given authority. Permanent, current, present authority in Christ if you're a believer. That's why the demon can say in the book of Acts, the seven sons of Sheba, the story, remember? Where he can say, the demon said, Jesus I know, and Paul the apostle referring to somebody who already cast out demons. And I've had that happen where there's demons that said, we know you, Dizdar. I've had them say that. Because they're real. They're out there. And uh, they may be the voices in your head and the presence around you. And without Jesus and His salvation and His deliverance, what are you going to do? If you want to come to Jesus just to get rid of demon spirits and go away, um, all that's going to happen is, yes, and we've seen this happen, kicking demons out, but then the person says, I don't want nothing to do with Jesus. I don't want saved. A matter of fact, I want to go back to my you know, old life. Here's the danger. The demons that are kicked out may go find more that are even stronger, bring them back to the unsaved person, and re-enter and bring deeper, stronger bondage, control, and destruction than ever before. Ever before. So let me just tell you this. Jesus is the ultimate deliverer and can set anybody free. Read it in John's Gospel 8. Read it in Mark chapter 1. But I need to say this. Salvation is the ultimate deliverance. Because Jesus comes to set you free, to forgive your sins, set you free from sin, set you free from the devil himself, and give to you the gift of eternal life, new life inside, powerful living, His personal presence, now and forever. And the love of God shed abroad in your heart. So if you're a believer, salvation is the ultimate, and it includes you being given the gift of authority, Luke chapter 10 again. And here's three primary factors I want to tell you about. Okay, Three primary factors. Number one, repent and renounce any and all sin that give, has given a doorway 
any other occult doorways, any family bloodlines, any, anything that you feel God has shown you that you've opened up legal rights, you need to say, Lord God, I, I just turn from these. I renounce these. I, and if you're a believer, just say it this way. In the name of Jesus, I renounce everything that I've ever done to open up to demons. I, right, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I renounce them. And if you're reminded of some of those, go out and just, just say them. I don't care if you've been an ex-Satanist and one time you you uh, you gave your total allegiance to Satan. Renounce Satan in the name of Jesus. I ask the Lord to protect you. And uh, right now, renounce every single possible doorway. Anything the Holy Spirit leads you, reminds you to say, you know, uh, re re repent of this issue, close this door, close that door, close this door. And then, as a believer in Christ, command the, any demonic presence. Get out in the name of Jesus. Never come back again. Jesus Christ is my Lord. The blood of Jesus covers me. And I have the authority of Christ. And I command you to leave. And then simply, you could even say, Lord Jesus, um, just deliver me from the demonic presence. And ask the Lord to fill you with the Spirit, fill you with the Word of God. Listen, Christian, if you've allowed some influence through your own personal sins, anger can give a doorway to influence from demons to where you're feeling out of control. Repent of the anger. Renounce to demonic you know, harassment and, uh, and influence. And ask the Lord Jesus to wash you and cleanse you and fill you with His Spirit. Give you peace and control. Again, I cry out to those who might not know the Lord Jesus at all. The only way you're going to ultimately close the door to the demons, the living Christ came to destroy all, expose the demons and all those alternative finite spirits, what they really are and what they really want. To really show them, show you and I, and uh, to show them to us for what they really are. And the only way out, my friend, the only way into heaven, my friend, the only way to see the face of God as your friend, come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said these words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. God has opened a door, and whosoever believes on the name of the Lord Jesus can be saved. Uh, Christ can come in. Cry out to Jesus. Ask Him to come into your life. Ask Him to deliver you from every demonic uh, demon spirit. No matter what you've been through, no matter what's occurred, even those who've been ritually abused can cry out to Jesus. Jesus, deliver me from demons. Jesus, attack the demons. Jesus, set me free. I trust in You. I come to You as Lord and Savior. And, uh, and you can begin to worship Jesus and praise Him Listen, God inhabits the praises of His people. The demons just don't like that at all either. And if you feel you have some kind of... If you begin to pray that way and you, maybe your body, your mind gets to be taken over, listen, cry out to God and say, God, lead me to somebody else. Guide me to somebody. Obviously, He's guided you to listen to this. He loves you. He's come to, want, he's come to set you free. In the Gospel of John, chapter 8, you can read, the truth... Sh you know, listen... The truth shall set you free. If you come to embrace the truth, believe the truth of Scripture, the Word of God, if you believe God and believe Jesus, the truth will set you free. I just feel led right now to share another verse, though, to some of you. In the Scriptures, it says in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. If even one person hears me, and you're saying, man, I'm not going to give in to Jesus. I'm not going to accept Him as Lord and Savior. I want to be my own God. I want to be my own. I want to do my own. You know what? If Listen, you're already lost. You're already lost. What are you going to do about it? You will already, because of your sin, you're already going to go to hell. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to get out of that? They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Don't you want to be saved? Is there any real good reason why you wouldn't want to be saved? To come to Jesus Christ, to be totally forgiven for everything, to receive into you the power of God? Cry out and ask Him to come into your life and set you free from all demons. 
If you have to struggle through it, pray through it in the name of Jesus, renounce demons, renounce doorways, renounce sins you've got into, renounce rituals you've done, renounce it all. Burn the old ancient books. I, I, I believe, I did that on my own. You know what I did? After that experience I had that night where I said I felt like it was like a massive demon walked into my room that night, the next day in the, with the peace of Jesus, the total peace of Christ, I went into my room, every poster, everything, I found the Ouija board, occult books, and even old drugs that were hidden. All this stuff I gathered together. I took out to a, a trash barrel. Nobody told me to do it. I just felt led by the Spirit of God. As a demonstration of my uh, leaving all of that, I poured gas on it, and I, I lit it, man. I lit it and praised God, and I burned It's like, you know what? I felt so totally separated from darkness then. Listen, if you will open wide your life totally to Jesus, He will fill it. Have you ever read Psalm 81.10, where God says that if you will open wide your whole life, He will fill your whole life. Come on, if you're a believer, repent of sins that open doors, repent of other things, turn to Jesus, renounce the demonic presence, use the authority Christ has given you, acknowledge it, Lord Jesus, I'm saved, I accept the authority you've given me, I command these demons, get out in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, deliver me completely and forever. Now burn the bridges, burn the bridges that the demons crossed over on and become a warrior for the Lord Jesus Christ in this final hour. Hey, this is Russ Dizdar. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray that this prayer will be effectual for every person, wherever and whenever. Lord, I acknowledge the timelessness of Christ. And I pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everyone that needs to be free. Expose the demons. I bind the demons in the name of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command them to be completely exposed and bound. And I command in Jesus' name, get out, get off. And I, and, I, and I ask, Lord Jesus, that you will set people free, that you will cause them to see the hidden uh, secretive work, the, sup the, uh, the seductive, deceptive work, and uh, reveal any and all demonic presences and work uh, in, vo in anything, voices or influence. And Lord Jesus, attack the demonic realm, like in 1 John 3, 8, destroy the work of the demonic side, the, of the devil himself, and set people free. My name is Russ Dizdar, shatterthedarkness.net, on the web. In case you got this on a CD somebody gave you or sent it to you in an email, I'm just telling you, go to shatterthedarkness.net, and you're going to find a ton of help there. Uh, you can go to Preemption Broadcast, and uh, you can... You can listen to many, many other sessions that can be helpful to you. And every Sunday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm live on the Blog Talk Internet Radio. And I've had individuals that have called in, called right in. A young man, a young fellow named Sam, about his friend that had influ demonic influence. And so you can call in. We can pray together. And uh, But right now, Seek the Lord. If you're lost, seek the Lord while He might be found right now. Now is the day of salvation. Today is the day of God's favor. Uh, God summons you. Come to Christ. Be set free. Be given His power, love, and eternal life. If you're a believer, and all the rest of us, let's burn the bridges that the demons have come over and tried to bring harassment. And uh, use your authority. Put on the armor of God. Learn about the armor of God. And be and uh, remember, listen, I want to give this to every believer in Christ, everybody. 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. You know what it says? I write to you, young believers, because you are strong and you've overcome the evil one. How is that possible? Because the Word of God lives in you. As you believe and obey the Word of God, you will become very spiritually strong and you will have decisive victory over the evil one himself. Hey, take a read for yourself. The Lord's blessing to you. Shatterthedarkness.net on the web. 